www.thelifeofmyfaith.com. I hope you guys are all doing well. As you can see behind me in the window, we've got sun again, which I am super excited about. Uh, I am so solar powered. I'm as solar powered as my home and the sun is just uh, glorious. I wish I could have you out there, but I wouldn't be able to see this morning. It's so bright with all the snow. So today we are going to talk about sweet successes. Good morning, Tammy. I'm sure all of you are progressing along with me here this year with the new beginnings and you're making changes in uh, the way maybe you're doing things and hopefully along this path you have found some sweet successes so we are going to talk about that. For those of you that are new to Treyer Wilderness, my name is Tammy Treyer. My family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho with solar power. We enjoy sharing our knowledge and educating others because we feel it is something that we are led to do and that it's essential for people to know uh, how to take care of themselves, how to be prepared, how to uh, be self-reliant, how to utilize traditional and primitive skills. And we also educate um, on these skills at uh, treyerwildernessacademy.com which you will be finding a lot of new courses coming your way in February, so I'm really excited about that. Good morning, Angela. So, my question for you folks this morning is, what are some of your sweet successes this year? I think it's really important that we are aware of them because in taking baby steps in making changes in our lives, we sometimes run right past our sweet successes because we're so ready to continue to um, hit the next one that we don't celebrate or recall the past sweet successes that have gotten us where we are headed. And I think it's important because uh, it's just a normal thing, I, th I believe, in our society to get stuck on the negative and, and to... Um, be discouraged and that is why I want to talk about our sweet successes. I am very excited. I have put in place a lot of new habits that I feel are now already a ingrained in me. They are a new habit. They are something that um, previously wasn't that I didn't like them or that I didn't want to do them. Um, it's just that for some reason I couldn't get it to stick. And so I think maybe the mindset was a little bit of discouragement and um, disappointment that I couldn't get it to stick. So feeling like I've accomplished that it is a huge sweet success. And something else that has really taken place for me, I, I talk about it a lot how my mountain man and I are, are pr pretty much free spirits. We, we don't, we aren't, <laughs> we aren't of this world. We are... We're born a hundred years too late and just have a very different mindset from the rest of the world. And we are embracers. We embrace our dreams. And um, I think in the past that has made me believe that um, being having a schedule of sorts was going against the grain of... Um, being that embracer and that wild child and I couldn't have been more wrong which I will share more on that I am excited you guys are bringing all kinds of good stuff on my screen here Lynn welcome good morning she is from the cold West River Prairie of South Dakota I bet you are cold welcome though I'm glad to have you joining me and we have Tammy Richards saying decluttered some and those places have stayed that way have stopped stressing about things we don't have control over awesome Awesome. Is that not a powerful thing, Tammy? That's just such an empowering thing when you can finally let go of those things that basically are controlling us because we can't control them. So letting it go is powerful. Awesome. And Diana says, good morning. We're on the road looking at properties. I can't get the sound loud enough to hear you over the road noise. <laughs> I'll have to catch catch the replay have a great day everyone you as well and good luck to you on your uh, property search all right and let's see here Sylvia good morning sweet friend and oh you are very welcome Lynn 
for the kind welcome. I, I love having new friends joining me every week, so thank you. So, you guys are progressing, and you're, you're, um, I hope, Tammy, that you are celebrating your sweet successes. Decluttering areas of the house and keeping them in that way are powerful, especially when we don't live by ourselves. That is one of my biggest struggles, is that I will declutter, but because I'm not by myself, things scatter, things spread, and right now, there's just no sense in even trying. Um, I'll just show you what's behind me. That is the heat behind me, and that is the heat beside me, and I won't even go out into our living area. Mountain Man is putting in a beam today, and stuff is just all over the place. Good morning, Chad. Good morning, good morning. So, I'm so glad to see so many new faces, and I'm so glad to have you guys join me every week. With 11 of us here, it is hard. Yes, Tammy, I imagine it is, and girlfriend, kudos to you. I can't imagine. There's just three of us, so I, I'm sure you have your hands full, and you should be, I'm celebrating for you for what you are accomplishing with having 11 in the household, so God bless you. <laughs> But sweet successes are really important in this journey. And at this point, you know, I'm sure you've had some struggles where um, life just took over because as much as we want to um, have a day-to-day -day that is perfect, it's never going to be perfect. And we need to realize that and be able to um, just continue to progress with a new beginning each day. Just keep trying. Just keep focusing forward. Angela says, I started making my bed every morning, which I didn't used to do. I'm getting better at getting to church and other places on time. Good morning, Miss Mona. And yes, that's awesome. And you know what? Something as simple as making our bed every day. Even if that's all you do, it becomes a, um, a process, a habit, and a purpose. And... I don't know about you, Angela, but it gives me great satisfaction when I walk into a room and it looks inviting and it looks welcoming and it's not stressing. So when my bed is made too, it just feels good. And, and being able to do things feels good. Some of us are limited because of illnesses and, and different things. And you know what? Sometimes just taking that one daily step can change everything. So awesome. Awesome, awesome. And and getting to church and to places, I get that. It's really funny. I know when I say this, you guys are going to be like, yeah, right. But I am the biggest introverted extrovert. I can talk to you on the screen. I can hold a conversation with you in person. I enjoy talking to people. But I enjoy the comforts of my home just as much. And it's very easy to just enjoy the comforts of my home so much that I don't have a need to go anywhere, and you guys feed my soul on Wednesdays, so sometimes it can be dangerous that I, I don't leave here and I don't get out of here. Um, I started doing my um, basket classes on Fridays, which has been good for me, but I find it overwhelming because I'm not used to that many hours of conversation with people, So and with my illness, it still does affect me, I'm finding, but it's just funny. So getting out to these places and being consistent is good and the mountain boy and I have made an effort to do that too he is practicing to be in the band at church this kid loves to sing and he's got one of those I guess you could call it photographic memories and that he remembers words to songs and when he hears a new song it's like he just instantly knows them and and he can remember them every word so it's really really awesome and 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 he's got a great voice. We're going to have to work over noise today. There's going to be all kinds of noise because we're under construction and we got sunshine and I can't hold him up. So I will try to holler. Hopefully you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me through the noise. But being able to get on a schedule, in order for him to practice for band, we need to be at church by 7.30 in the morning, which is over a half an hour away or more. And Sunday we hit black ice and God kept us from hitting a concrete barrier and guardrail. I mean, it was totally an act of God going out that early in the morning for starters uh, to get us up. And Adam, thank you guys. Okay, I'm glad you can hear me. Um, so, you know, to leave the house at that early and know that, you know, going through the mountains, we're going to be hitting some weather. 
but we're trying to make it a point to get there on time and to get there so that he can practice and be um, reliable. Um, it's just a very early hour and it is sketchy this time of year, but we are trying too. So I think that's interesting um, that I'm not the only one trying to accomplish those things. And I'm glad to hear that you are being successful. Angela Emerson says, trying to praise my kids a lot more. It's easy to be negative. Yeah, and you know, um, ourselves too, Angela. Uh, I hope in the midst of your praising your children that you're also praising yourself because we've talked about the negative voices and things that we say to each other. Thank you, Lynn. Um, you know, we, now I got to tone it down. He stopped making noise. <laughs> I feel like I'm screaming. Um, no, you're fine, babe. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, we have a tendency to, um, you know, praise everybody else and be good to everybody else, but we're rough on ourselves. So remember to be good to yourselves and have good things to say to yourselves. And I hope you guys are tracking the things that you do say that are negative because, um, over time, our bodies and our minds and our spirits believe those things. So we need to redirect those things. If you look in the mirror and you're constantly saying you're fat, you need to say I'm skinny and I'm, pr and I'm beautiful, you know, or I'm handsome because that applies to men too. You know, we have this ability, like I said, when I was sick, um, I, I had a tendency to, to say that I was worthless and that I was old. My face was so swollen all the time and so many wrinkles and you know what? We just, we are our worst enemies sometimes. So remember, in addition to praising other people, to be good to yourself. And that does not mean that you are um, narcissistic. It means that you are lo humbly loving yourself and allowing yourself to be a better person so that you can love your family and your children more. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let me see here. We have, okay, Melinda, I'm so glad to see you, girl. Um, Melinda, if you go to our website and you look up um, the pumpkin pie recipe that's on there, Melinda's grandmother, um, that is where that recipe came from. I think of Melinda all the time, and I'm so grateful that she shared that recipe. And she says, riding the stationary bike 30 minutes every day. Woohoo! That's awesome. That is awesome. And are you tracking your miles? I have an extra, my, my stationary bike I've had since I'm 18. It looks like it's brand new. I ride it all the time, though. The beauty of it is it just doesn't get beat up because you're just sitting there riding it. But one thing that I, I occurred to me is when I ride... For 30 minutes I usually calculate uh, about 13 miles roughly depends how vigorous I'm riding and how much energy I have but I just was curious the other day when we were talking how many miles are on that bike I've been riding it since I'm 18 and when I used to ride for an hour I'd ride at 35 miles an hour so I was I was that was insane I don't know how I stayed on it but anyway it's just curious to wonder how many miles we are putting on these things and good for you don't you feel good good morning Kelly I'm glad you made it I saw your message but I couldn't type while I was talking so I'm glad you found me and um, Jackie says good morning and good morning to you sweet friend trying to be positive helps my cowboy had serious back surgery needs prayers for pain relief and healing please you bet May I ask his name, please? And we will absolutely add him to the prayer list and be praying for you both because you are the caretaker as well. And I know how some men don't enjoy being laid up, so that can be hard to hold a cowboy down. So praying for you, dear friend, and thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Oh, and Tammy just said that she's praying also. That just warms my heart. I love how you guys interconnect. Ah, it's so awesome. Okay. It's warm up here, so bear with me a second. Ah! I gotta open a window and I gotta make it through the pile of stuff. And I wanna, while I'm up, I wanna show you something. Okay, and I gotta take a layer off, excuse me, but it is really warm up here. And now I'm not having a hot flash, it's just really warm up here. Okay, here we go. Now, I've got neat things to share today in addition to what we're doing um, here. Okay, 
Mona, that one was for you. She gets a kick out of me swiping my hair out of the way. Um, this is my basket that I've, I started three weeks ago, but I've only worked on it three different times so far. Um, just trying to squeeze it in with everything, but I am so excited. Um, and I'm also excited that the mountain boy is going to be joining me on the basket course. Um, my friend that is teaching it had a wooden centerpiece, unlike the blue one that I'm using. Um, it's wooden and it has a wood burned fish or duck on it that he can choose to make. But, um, the mountain boy is becoming much more independent, which I will be sharing in a little bit. And, um, we thought it'd be neat for him to learn how to do these. These pine needles are all around us and there's no reason why a man can't make manly baskets. So he's going to make a basket for on the top of his dresser, um, to put his stuff from his pockets in. So I'm excited to have him, him, him joining me because he is really gifted in doing things with his hands and really gifted in doing repetitive things. So I am anxious and very curious to see what he creates. So I just wanted to share that. That's one of my projects. Friday's getting out to do baskets was one to give me more community and more fellowship and also to learn a skill. This is something I can continue to do and I'm really excited too because the, I think it was the, oh shoot. It was an Indian tribe at the moment. I just lost which one it was. But they would weave those so tight that they would hold water without adding pitch or anything. So that is going to be my goal, is to learn how to do these so that they will hold water. So that in a survival situation, I can just go into the woods and make a basket. So how cool is that? Good morning, Cammie. Okay, so let me scroll back down. You guys are messaging today, and I love it. Okay, thank you, uh, Jackie. Um, th his name is John, for those of you that will be praying, and I will add you guys to our prayer list. And again, thank you for asking. That just warms my heart. Um, we've got such an amazing community forming here, so I am so grateful. Kelly says, adding Jackie's husband to prayer journal, and we'll pray for him this morning. Thank you, Kelly. Um, we've got so many amazing prayer warriors on here. So if any of you out there ever need prayer, you don't need to share the details if you don't wish to. Um, God knows what they are, but we've got a, a very powerful group of prayer warriors. And they may not all be on here. I share the prayer list on our website. I share the prayer list in the description. So YouTubers, Facebookers, everybody's seeing it. And we've got a lot of, a lot of prayer warriors all over the country. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, uh, Kelly asked what the center is. That is a piece of agate. Um, it is a stone that is actually uh, molded in plastic so that it can have, it has, I don't know if you can see it, but it has holes around the outside so that you can stitch into it. So they take the agate and then they um, mold it in the plastic so that you can use it as a center. Oh, fingers in the way of the camera. Let me see. Kelly says, what a wonderful craft. Be sure to share the finished project, his finished project. I will. I'm, I'm, we're actually going to probably video there too, because I've got some other exciting news that I'm going to share with you in a second. Um, let's see. Kelly says, be sure to share both the finished baskets. Very interesting. Thank you. We will. And, um, oh, Lynn said, cowboy John prayers for back pain relief. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Ah, warms my heart. Okay. My exciting news is that um, the mountain, I keep saying mountain boy, it's just so normal, but the mountain man junior is um, becoming more independent. He was living in his camper on our property all last summer, and then it got too cold and just um, inefficient to heat it, so he's been back in the house, but um, he is venturing out on his own. He'll be living in an apartment, and um, when we first moved here, um, Many of you may know this, that this whole online presence started only because I'm a web designer and that was my trade and my means of keeping us going while we were building our home. And I created a blog just to keep our family aware of our happenings, that we were still alive, that we weren't eaten by mountain lions, wolves, and bears, and um, just to keep in touch with us. And it just so happened that people kept finding us and we kept 
growing a larger reach and and then it went from something called given a gift because I felt that I was given a gift I have a beautiful um, mountain man junior I have an amazing mountain man and we were given this amazing gift that God opened the doors for to just head here and be able to purchase raw land and build our home and um, as things expanded um, Trier Wilderness uh, became a thing. First we were mountain man, mountain boy, and mountain woman journals all independently, but I can't keep up with all of that. So we just unified and that's where Trayer Wilderness came from. But I had also created Spectrum Kids in the Outdoors because I've always felt led that when you learn something new, it's important to share it. And it's important to be able to help people that are coming on behind you, especially when you know that you've gone through extreme trials and, and efforts to get where you are and to find the things you've found that you need to make it easier for the people coming behind you. So sharing our journey with the mountain boy at the time, now Mountain Man Jr., um, was really important to me because so many people told me they didn't want us to have a diagnosis because it would travel with him, but without a diagnosis I had no way and means of helping my son. So. The Spectrum Kids in the Outdoors was created in an effort to help people on the spectrum, whether at the time children, because we saw such huge growth in um, Austin with our environment, how we were living, how we were homeschooling and all of that. Well, now that he's 22 and he had mountainboyjournals.com and he's still out there, um, he was making his elk hide moccasins and paracord um, different pieces of paracord uh, survival tools and gear. He's got a lot of new things coming. And we felt that, you know, because he's no longer a mountain boy, we needed something that was going to embrace everything that he was going to do. So Mountain Boy Journals and Spectrum Kids in the Outdoors is now being morphed into biggerthanautism.com. And I'm very excited. He's got some awesome, awesome things coming um, for everybody, not just those on the spectrum. And we wanted to be able to gear it to not just kids, but adults, because there's a lot of adults on the spectrum that haven't found the help that he has or the resources or the knowledge or didn't have people in their lives to help them progress and step out of their comfort zone. And we want to offer that. And um, of course, it's my nature to help my young man. So I am going to help him form this journey and get this journey started so that he can take it over. So, a half an hour after I am finished today here, we are he and I are going to go live on Bigger Than Autism on Facebook. So you can find him by going to facebook.com slash bigger than autism. And if you feel so inclined, share it with those that you know that are on the spectrum that could use his assistance because he has got awesome stuff coming. Um, he will be doing cooking classes and cooking shows as he's making his meals. Um, he is going to be working. Uh, this one I'm going to let him share because this one he's excited about. This is huge. So if you join us later, you'll find out about the big project he will be working on come probably April. So let me see here. We've got a bunch of more comments here. Oh, thank you, Kelly. She said it. it is beautiful and, wow, wonderful for the Mountain Man Jr. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm very, very excited. And these are sweet successes. These are sweet progressions. These are going from one goal to the next. And this is something that you guys can see actually transpiring in our lives and mimic them in yours because whatever goals are on your list, you can't accomplish them. You're going to hit roadblocks. You're going to hit um, stumbling blocks. You're going to get discouraged. But if you keep taking baby steps in a forward motion, you will eventually hit your goal. Whether that's this year, whether that's five years from now, everybody's different. Everybody has different goals in mind and different um, lifestyles in mind uh, you know so how it fits your schedule and your life that's up to you and you need to base that on you and you may need to learn that as you progress too but having purpose every day is really really important and I think I mentioned it before out here that for the mountain man junior 
it has been hard to find work out here. We live in an area where there is a lot of logging and um, it's a huge logging industry. It's a seasonal industry. A lot of the businesses in town are seasonal geared to work with the logging industry. So it's hard to find work and you have your summer months where you've got a lot of tourists coming in and there's work available, but then boom, you're laid off. Even the grocery stores are that way. So even if you wanted to stock shelves, you know, it's something that he might get a job, but then shortly thereafter he would lose it because of the seasonal aspect of things. So that's why we are creating a job for him. He's got a lot to offer. He's very crafty. Um, he does wood burning. He does his leather work. He does his paracord work, which will all be for sale on his website. And, um, I just think that he's got a lot of inspiration to share too. And the, and the reason I mention this is because we all have those abilities. We all live in different areas. Um, and before I go any further, this is on my mind. I'd like to ask you guys to keep Cynthia and her family as well as Pat. Um, Pat is Cynthia's mother-in-law. And Pat is the one teaching me how to make baskets. And she shared with me Sunday that Cynthia's brother was in a horrific logging a fatal logging accident last week um, that took his life and they are dealing with the morning of that this week and his services so if you would just keep all of them in your prayers it is a very very rough industry whether you are on the equipment out in the mountain or or felling the trees or carrying the logs or the chips our um, roads out here have no mercy um, it's very easy to hit black ice and just get shot off the mountain to your death because it's just such a far drop. Um, there aren't guardrails in most places. Sunday I was fortunate that I didn't hit them to begin with, but that they were there if I had. So just keep them in your prayers. Um, but as, as we progress each week, I would love to hear your sweet successes. I would also love to hear your struggles because sometimes your struggles when mentioned in a group setting can be um, worked out. Maybe others have other ideas on how they overcame the same struggles. Um, and being able to share those things are really important. It also is a um, accountability opportunity for us to be accountable to one another and to be able to help each other as we progress, which is what this is all about. Having an accountability partner is huge. And I'm here to cheer you guys on every week because I know what it's like to try to have a schedule, to try to keep things organized, to try to keep things decluttered, to, to try to keep up sometimes is difficult. We'll be in prayer for the family. So tragic. Yes. Yeah, it was really, really sad. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you also, Tammy, for praying. Good morning, Cindy. So I want to encourage you guys to share what's going on in your walk um, and how you are struggling, how you are succeeding, and maybe what habits you've put in place. Melinda's riding the bike for 30 minutes a day. That is awesome. And it always feels so good. I always feel so... I've, I'm the exercise fool. I love to exercise. I feel so good after I exercise and so invigorated. And guys, I want to encourage you too in this walk to make sure you get outside. I know many of you don't like winter. It's been really, really icy here. So I feel like the little Pixar old guy with my cane as I walk with the mountain boy and the dogs every, every day. I have my uh, snowshoeing poles because it is just so slippery, but I refuse to miss out on a day like today. So we will be getting out. And it's just crazy too, the dogs have no sense. So they hit the ice and here they come sliding. It's like bowling pins, that's what I'm afraid of. So at least with my stick, I can dig it in and try to jump out of the way. So comic relief. I, uh, If only I could video it as it's happening, but that would just be the camera going upside down. So. Getting outside, though, is really refreshing. It really does a lot for us, and we don't give it enough credit. And um, that has been a goal of mine greatly, is to be sure that I get outside time. Yesterday, we were um, cleaning and um, working inside all day, but I, it was essential that we got outside. So we took our break and went outside, got some fresh air, got our drinks, and just chilled outside for a while. It was pretty crisp, but oh, it feels so good. 
Cindy says it's 21 degrees in Maryland and you're wearing a tank, girlfriend. <laughs> I need to get my exercise mindset in gear. Yes, I'm in my she cave and it feels like it's 90 degrees up here. I did have the flannel on on top, but Mountain Man is working downstairs. I have the window open behind me too. It's just very warm up here. <laughs> so yes, my winter attire with the wood stove kicking in up here. So... And I heard you guys were supposed to get some cold, cold weather. I know Michigan has negative temps too, so pretty crazy. We've been we've been pretty warm in the 40s actually a lot of the time, but we're supposed to get a cold spell again starting I think Friday. So it's just been a weird winter. We need snow or we are going to have some major, major issues this summer for our wildfire season. Kelly says, I've been struggling, but praise the Lord, God's given me the strength to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah, you know, we all go through that, Kelly. Um, we hit a really discouraging um, time about a week and a half ago. Um, it was it was quite something, and, and we were both discouraged. Um, just felt a little alone in our walk because we really feel God guiding us and, and um, others weren't understanding that and, or, or um, encouraging that. And it was a little bit discouraging. So, you know, we all go through those times where it's sometimes just hard to get out of bed. And, and that's, it happens. But the thing is, we've got to have enough strength, inner strength, to push ourselves forward and to... Um, if we can't do it alone, know where we can go. We have God, and that is one powerful, powerful place to go. But if you need a human um, empowerment and, and just an ear, and you don't feel like you're, you know, God is enough, and I want to tell you, God is enough. But you, having powerful, prayerful friends is really important that will pray for you for your direction and for God's hand in your life, that is just extremely, extremely huge. So that's what the beauty of this is every week is that we've got people that are that and that will be willing to lift you up and pray for you. And so I want to encourage all of you with that, you know, and it's, it's important to have prayerful, good Christian friends too, that can really walk the walk with you. I'm very blessed in that way. And I, I pray that for all of you too, because you know, we all have moments, we all have valleys we're going through, and when you're going through those valleys, if you don't have good prayerful friends, um, sometimes you can feel really alone in that journey. And God is always there, but uh, as you progress in that walk, sometimes it, you, you may not feel like it's enough or that He's there, but please pull in because, and keep keep praying. The more you pray and the more you pull into God's word, the more comfort and peace will come to you. That is a most definite. And Kelly, I know you know that sister. So, but let's see here. You guys are talking to me a lot today. I love it. So much going on. This is good stuff. Um, okay. Kelly says negative five with wind chill this morning, but enjoying our morning chores. Yeah. There's something good about being out there when it's that crisp and just I always love going out and milking my goats. That was just something that was very, very comforting to me, regardless what the temperature was. Wood heat is awesome. I know. I couldn't live without the wood heat and the and the wood stove. That flame at night, just and on cold and m miserable days, it's just very comforting. And I'm really thankful for our wood heat. Tammy says, we had negative 10 this morning with no wind. We need snow as well. Yeah, I'm sure. It's so weird. I mean, we finally have snow up on the mountains again, but for the longest time they were bare, and that's scary out here. Lynn says, Pat, Cynthia, and family, so sad to hear a fatal logging accident. This happened to my cousin David in the winter of 1981 down near Eminence, Missouri. He was hauling logs, hit black ice, and went I believe probably off the mountain. It's not showing me the rest, but I'm so sorry, Lynn. Yeah, it's scary, scary stuff. It just makes me cry when I see stuff like that because uh, what a tragic, tragic way to go. And and it is scary. I mean, we we go hiking at the top of mountains, and to get there, you have to use the old logging roads. And I mean, there is no mercy. You know, there's some times where we have to go to the edge of the road to go around holes or debris or whatever. And, oh, man, it's far down. Good morning, Tiffany. Prayers lifting for Pat and family. Thank you so much, Kelly. 
God is enough. Yes, exactly, Jackie. You know, I, I, I want to encourage that to people because so many people feel, you know, that they're just talking to air and that it's not enough. And, and when we're in really low places and it's hard to grab our own bootstraps, um, I've been there. It's, it's, you know, you, I guess because you're talking to something that we can't see, you know, um, in my past, I've experienced that, I guess, where, you know, you don't feel like you're, you know, you're just talking to yourself where really you're not. And, and it's so powerful and he's there. And, and when you trust in the peace that can come from him, you will gain peace. And I want to share this. One of my sweet successes is this. I said earlier how being the embracer and the wild child that conforming to a schedule um, just didn't seem right. But there is something so great about having a schedule. And I can tell you right now that there is one thing and one thing only that I need to schedule and the rest of my day will follow in uniform and, and be productive and, and be what it needs to be based on that one thing in my schedule. And that is getting up in the morning grabbing my phone but not looking at it, getting my cup of coffee and sitting down with my Bible, my, my uh, prayer journal, and just spending time with God. And um, for all of us, and I see the mountain man really pulling into that, you know, our time in the morning like that is well over an hour spent. And I can't tell you how valuable that is and what a sweet success that is in making our days something very powerful. Whether I am spending time with you guys, whether I am fellowshipping face, fellowshipping face to face with a, a friend, God gives us the words, he gives us the direction, and he gives us success in our days. He gives us productivity, he gives us direction. He keeps us on task and doing the things that are most important and the things that are most valuable and I think once you do that, your life becomes very, very rich and very, very wholesome because we're no longer chasing the um, emptiness of busyness. We're chasing what's important. And, and I'm finding that in doing that, I am spending less time working but getting more accomplished and getting more finished and getting more done and being more successful. And that is because he is guiding my day. I'm not guiding my day anymore. And that one necessity in my day makes all the difference. I don't need a schedule beyond that. I mean, we keep track of our appointments and things, but when you work from home, I think, the mentality is that if you're not busy, you're not working, and that's just not true. So I want to encourage you guys to try that and to try honing in on that and seeing how that time well spent, the more you pull in, the more you focus, the more you repetitively do that, how powerful your week and your days and the quality of what you are producing becomes. Just try it. I want to encourage that. Okay. Kelly says it is. I'm sorry, my finger is in the way. It is so reaffirming to have good prayer warriors. God knew I needed that. It is. It is very powerful. It's very, very powerful to have and know that you have people praying for you. To know that when you ask, they wholeheartedly are wanting to pray for you. And um, I'm really pleased with the quality of people um, that come here for fellowship and for community every week and for, for feeding, you know, we all need fed. We all need encouragement. We all need to know that we're on the right track, to know that when we are failing, um, that we can come to a group of people to be re-empowered, to keep going. And you know, a lot of times, and this is both men and women, and I know all of you will raise your hand, give me some hearts. And, and I know that it's true that in your walk and in your life, there are people in your life that you are afraid to um, share your goals and your dreams with. You are afraid to share any of your very personal information with certain people because you know that their intentions aren't going to be good when they exit the room and leave your presence. 
and that's hard to see and that breaks my heart a lot to see that and and sadly that is something that is in the church as well it's not just limited to out in public it's something that happens in the church as well and that's why a lot of people get discouraged and don't go to church and why they don't seek God because there's a lot of hypocrisy so it's really powerful to me because there's something so nurturing to know that you can share your heart and soul with somebody and know that it stops there and know that what you are sharing um, is valued and you are valued because it is if you are speaking to somebody who values you enough not to share what you're sharing with them with anybody else but to lift you in prayer and to encourage you and to um, if they can at least try to understand where you're at that's a powerful thing and that is the community I feel we are forming here it just feels it's just so strong and, and I just always feel God's presence when, when we meet every week. And it's just so, so fulfilling. So I'm going to keep going here. Tiffany says, good morning. And Kelly says, morning, Tiffany. Awesome. So glad to see you guys communicating ah, with each other. Sorry, that was loud. Um, I hit something and I didn't want to lose you all. Kelly says, Amen. We used to struggle finding time. Now we yearn for it. We do our morning devotion together with breakfast before Mike leaves for work. We are all finding, we are praying throughout the day. You know, I can't read the whole thing, so I'm not sure what else you said there. But it becomes an addiction. It becomes something that you yearn, and so greatly so, that I'm sure you pause throughout your day when you feel the need to pray for somebody or that you need an inner strength because whatever you're working on is harder than you anticipated you're running into troubles whatever and guys I can't encourage it enough to teach your children how to pick up the Bible and read it and learn from it and to do a journal I I told you before, I wish so much that I would have been journaling daily while we were living in that tent because I could have turned it into a book. It was just, and just to look back on it, to be so priceless, to see day to day. I mean, we can remember a lot of it, but I know there's so much that little details that um, you miss. And teaching children to reflect on what they've read by writing the verse down and, and writing down what they've gotten out of it. And what was neat this morning is the, um, Austin and I sit on the couch and drink our coffee and just chill and, and do our devotions together. And uh, just not, not reading the same things, but just spending that time sitting together while we do our own thing. And he, he just went, huh, that's the same verse I read yesterday. And he randomly opens his Bible. You know, I do that too where I ask God to show me what I need to see today and I'll randomly open to things and, and feel very directed. And I said to him, I said, well, you know, maybe read over it again and, and see how it might pertain to what you're walking out right now. Because I said, if God's shown it to you multiple times, there might be purpose and reason in it and something that he's trying to share with you and show you. But for them to also look back in their journals, it's good writing practice. And um, I don't know if you guys follow the boss of the swamp, but he has journaled his whole life and he does readings from his past journals and it's just really neat and it's neat for him too, you know, but it's just something that is powerful to re-enter and also to share with others sometimes. So don't take your journaling lightly and don't forget to share it with your children. I think it's just really important. Kelly says we are, whoop, we also spend devoted time in prayer in the evenings before bedtime. Yeah, that's powerful. And I think that something that's really awesome for us too is uh, being able to pray together. We pray over our meals together. And uh, the, the mountain man and I pray together before we go to bed also. And to me, that is one powerful man. A man that is a God-fearing man and that is willing to lead his family in prayer, not be afraid of prayer. You know, some men, most, well, men don't enjoy conversation as much as women. I mean, that's a given fact. Um, and, you know, 
being able to pray out loud and openly, I think, is a very bold statement on a man's part. And I'm just, I, I'm really, I feel very blessed by that. And it's a powerful thing when you can do that. Miss Cammie says, I think I really needed to hear that this morning. Thank you, Tammy. Ah, you're welcome. It's so good to see your little smiling face on here. And I can't believe how, how big Sadie has gotten. I can't wait to see you guys. But I'm glad you joined. We've got wonderful people here and... I feel that every week things are divinely shared with me on what we need to talk about because we are all walking similar walks. We all go through similar things and we got to remember to cheer ourselves on in regard to our sweet successes. Something that we need to remember in those sweet successes is giving ourselves time to celebrate that and being good, pausing. Um, one of the things in my daily journal or my, my, I'm sorry, my, uh, habits, my daily habits that I'm creating is to stop and enjoy life. And when you have a sweet success, you need to stop and you need to get yourself a cup of tea, get yourself a cup of coffee, read something that you may not have had time to read otherwise, watch something that you wouldn't normally have watched. Just be good to yourself because we need to honor our successes and we need to, um, like I said, remember those successes. As you progress forward and you hit some more um, adversity, sidetracks, road bumps, you need to remember that you did succeed already and that yes, I also went through some of this before. So keep moving forward. The thing you got to remember too is when you're going through the struggles, to walk away from them sometimes. Don't be, keep, uh, going headstrong into them, expecting to find better results. Sometimes you can, but when you go headstrong into something where you already have adversity and you're not making any headway and what you've just done has made no change whatsoever, walk away. Walk away and enjoy your life. Stop and enjoy life. Go outside, get some fresh air, and return either later or the next day. We'd do that when we were homeschooling, when the mountain boy would hit a point where he was just totally overstimulated and there was no sense in pushing forward because nothing was going to be gained other than me getting angry and upset because I couldn't get him to move forward. And there's no sense in that. And him getting upset and discouraged because he wasn't accomplishing what he needed to. So... We all hit those things, not just the children, us adults too. And we need to learn how to walk away when we are not making any progress or when we're overstimulated. You know, there's lots of great things we can do. You can sit down and read a book. You can listen to music. You can go bake something or cook something or divert your attentions to the meal for the day, whatever. But Learn how to turn your back on your struggles when need be and learn how to celebrate your sweet successes. Tammy says so true about the churches. Yeah, and, and you know, it's sad. And the thing is, I want to point out, when you... There's, there are, there's always going to be hypocrites. There's always going to be people with a negative mindset and a stir the pot kind of mindset. And you know what? I look at those people and I think, you know what? I feel for them. I'm saddened for them because something in their life is not right. That's making them feel that that's something they have to do. So I pray for them rather than allow them to discourage my walk or turn people from the church. I pray for them in hopes that they will see what they're doing and maybe learn to have more encouraging words or maybe learn how to be a better friend or a better person in the regard of loving people. We are called to love people and you know, I feel the ones that don't know how to love people are not love themselves. So if you can't directly love on them, because most of the time those people are hard to love, just pray for them. That's excessive love right there. That's the best gift of love you can give them. So pray for them. I actually had an experience yesterday with somebody that I've known for a long time. And, you know, people change. People progress into different characters. The other thing is who we spend our time with. And I want to remind you of that. In order to reach your sweet successes and to progress in a good way, we need to be careful of who we spend our time with because who we spend our time with can create who we become. 
So if you are spending time with somebody who is very negative and very um, narcissistic, very into themselves, very um, unloved and don't love others, you got to be careful with that because when you spend too much time with that kind of a person, it's very likely you will become that person if you are not careful. So who we spend our time with and our company with is very important and I want you to remember that. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't, um, we can't love on those people from afar, but we don't necessarily need to spend direct time with them. I've walked, I've had to walk away from a lot of people in my life and yesterday I had to do the same and, um, it's sad and it saddened me greatly, but the only thing in those situations we can offer somebody that can't see, um, is, is prayer and love through prayer. So remember that. And it is a sad thing because we do chase a lot of people away from the churches. Um, thankfully, there's a lot of people that do home churches, but the community and the fellowship is what's being missed. And I really feel that very strongly. I just love the communication we have, and I love that it's coming out more and more the more we do this. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm not the hero of this show. It's all of us because we all have something to contribute. Um, I have the same wish that I had journaled when we lived in the Amish house. Oh, I bet you did. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, looking back on those things. I mean, even what I have journaled, I look back on and I chuckle and I re recall. And something else that we kept track of is um, we had a, a note in Evernote um, titled, You Can't Make This Stuff Up. And it's all our little funnies and our hiccups and our bloopers and our and the funny things that we say to one another and our our dinner time talk. Like I've said before, the Mountain Man Jr. is very literal minded, so he takes things very literally, which just is so so funny because it's so backwards from your normal thinking. And then when something is supposed to be taken literally, he doesn't get it. So it just adds so much humor and through humor and laughter and and that like he never used to get jokes and when he would say jokes they they didn't always make sense because they were formulated through a literal mind so it was just very funny and that was a way that we taught him how to laugh and enjoy humor and to understand humor so keeping those notes and to be able to look back on them is just so funny and so much fun so that's why this year it has become, I am 30 days in and I am 30 days on that I have done my journal. And some days are really busy, so what I will do is just leave myself little notes as the day goes on so that at the end of the day I can formulate everything rather than doing it in the morning like I usually start out doing and then finishing it in the evening. So I don't want to miss anything in between, but I have made it a huge point to do that. And I think it's just, I think it's, feeds our soul too when we do write in there and we th I use it as my gratitude journal so I'm I'm thanking God for so much out of my day cuz you know I say to look for the one tiny little thing when everything is falling apart but I still find so many things to be thankful for and I want to encourage you guys to do that too because that's such a powerful step in our sweet successes is being able to see the things that we should be grateful for even when life is upside down so remember that. Kelly says, I agree. It's sad. So very sad. We've not had good experience with any of our local churches. Some of it is small town. Yeah. And you know, no matter, no matter where you go, you're going to run into it. Um, and, and some cases more than others and small town can be very, very tough. Um, we've learned that ourselves. And, um, but I think the important thing that we need to remember is how we hold ourselves and how we hold ourselves accountable in those situations. And that um, I just feel in my heart that it's important for me, for my character and how I feel about myself to stand tall above all of that not that I'm better than anybody else, but that I want myself to be accountable to God for my behavior. So when in those circumstances, I have a really hard time when people start talking about other people. I really greatly struggle with that very deeply because it's wrong. 
and and I don't want to be a part of that. So I either find an opportunity to walk away from that or I try to turn it or just, you know, change the subject because that's not something we're supposed to do. But I think that when we are in those environments, when we are in those small town churches, when we, then it's our only option. We walk taller and do what we're called to do. And doing so will give us a good feeling in that situation. And like I said, the only other thing we can do in that situation is rather than be angry at those people, pray for them. Pray for their hearts to be softened. Pray for their their eyes to be opened and their ears to hear and realize what they're doing. And, and you know... That's a powerful gift, and you never know what that might do. Plus, additionally, I think that when we are able to walk the walk and talk the talk, we can also lead by example. To be bold enough to be in a group of, I'm just going to say women right now, be in a group of women that all start you know, talking about somebody, and to be bold enough and fearless enough to say, I'm, you know, I don't think this is right, or... How about we talk about something else? You know, that's a lot of food for thought. And if it's spoken properly, I always pray that God gives me the right words in those situations. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to look or come off as though I'm better than anybody else because I'm not. And um, regardless of what they're doing, we need to be able to walk bolder and to be a light. So those are my thoughts on that for today. It's hard though. It's not easy. And, um, but the more I walk this out, the more I pull into him, the more I feel that's what we are called to do. And the more I feel that's my duty. So it's, it's, and we're not called to do the easy guys. We're, we're not called to do the easy. This is not an easy walk. Um, the disciples did not have an easy walk. And uh, being called to pick up our cross is not an easy walk. Um, so just food for thought for today. Let's see. Uh, Kelly says, I didn't journal, but I do a blog. It's so funny to look back. Oh, awesome. Well, and it is. It is. Um, my early days on the blog were just our, you know, how we were living and what we were doing and it wasn't, it wasn't how to's and it wasn't, um, you know, an, a nicely constructed, uh, blog post. It was just happenings in the wilderness. So I'm telling you guys, start now, no matter what age you're at and start journaling because you will appreciate it. Your older self will appreciate it so much more and something else your children may greatly appreciate it. You know, I pray in my journals like I said, it's my prayer journal too. So I pray for my men every day in different ways in my journal. And, you know, looking back, a child may see that as an, a young adult or an adult and see how you were praying for them. You know, that's pretty powerful. And it's a pretty powerful thing we can pass on too because it's something they will maybe pick up and, uh, you know, return to their children. So Kelly says, I'm journaling now and finding three times a week works best for me right now. And that's just it, is learning to figure out what works best for us. So it's not just January that we start diving in and trying to change our schedule and create new habits and create goals and create a schedule. It's a lifelong process because so much changes. We grow. We change. We know what our needs are better than anybody else. And as you progress through each month, you're going to change and you're going to need to address some things and life may throw you a curveball and then all of a sudden, you know, your three days a week may become one just to progress through whatever the change is or maybe life will become so grand that you have to write in it every day because there's so much happening that's amazing that you don't want to miss writing in. So look at every day as a new beginning. Look at every day as a growth as an opportunity to grow and to become a better self not not somebody else not you know it's a better you we're not trying to be better than anybody else because that serves no purpose but being a better us is powerful every day 
we have the opportunity to improve ourselves and to pr improve what we're witnessing or how we're witnessing. Jackie says, I bake bread when I am stressed or worried and share it. It helps to brighten someone else's day with fresh bread. Oh, there's nothing better than the smell of fresh bread and eating fresh bread. I am doing the Daniel fast and um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I feel so much better. So I probably will not be partaking on bread. Bread causes me a great deal of inflammation but the reason I'm sharing this is the mountain man had a hankering for uh, fry bread on Sunday so he made fry bread and watching them eat that fry bread there is just something comforting about bread so I think that's a great thing and we know each know what works best for us I work out when I'm stressed um, I do like to bake and and share it too though and you know guys that is a great way um, to be a light also, is gifting our, our baked goods and that um, to people. Um, that, that says a lot, I think, and especially in this day and age, because people used to do that all the time. That was normal. It's not so normal anymore. So kudos to you, Jackie. And the smell of fresh bread. Oh, I just love that. I've got to bake bread today or tomorrow, too, myself, because the guys are running out. Negative breeds negative and bitterness. I know have lived it for too many years. Yes, Kelly. And it does. And and you know what? No matter how kind you are to a negative soul, I think the only thing that can change a negative person is prayer and God. Because and, and we it's it's a it's a fact. We can't change people. It's not our job to change people. But it is true that there are negative people out there that no matter what you say, they will they will find a negative twist for it where we are trying to find the positive twist for it. So sometimes, you know, just freeing ourselves from that negativity and praying for people is one of the most freeing and the best ways to lift extreme weights from ourselves. And once you are able to do that, that's such a growth period and you will end up with so many sweet successes moving forward from that situation. It, it, negativity is illness. Negativity will create illness in our lives if we are not careful. And um, I have negative people in my past that I still pray for every day because it's very sad. They're stuck in that place and, until they are willing to accept God's help. So it, it, is a, it is a very ugly place. So when we can pull ourselves out of that and be positive people and choose to be positive and choose to walk away, I think we will find such sweet, sweet successes. I know I have. I had to do that in 2016, and um, it was it's rough to do that. It's a hard thing, but it's also very powerful, and the immediate result was very freeing. So praying for that for you, girl. Angela says, what was the autism Facebook group or page that you mentioned? My son isn't diagnosed on the spectrum, but has some learning problems and is very literal. Okay. It is facebook.com slash bigger than autism. All one word. And um, you'll see a picture of my son and his dog. And right now it just says bigger than autism in green print on the header. Um, we are working on all the graphics and the website right now. But... Um, uh, I believe that um, anybody that is on the spectrum, he, my son also has Asperger or had Asperger tendencies. So, um, and there's so many different sides to the spectrum. You've got people that are very low functioning and people that are very high functioning. But I still feel no matter what side of the spectrum you're on that you can still be nurtured and still be uh progress to different places um, when given the opportunities and that's what we want to try to strive there and the fun thing is I know that when Austin starts doing this if he has people like your son come out Angela and communicates with him I, I think that they will form a really neat community there and that's what my prayer is for him because he has some really neat things that he's going to be sharing, not just life skills in his apartment, 
um, you know, balancing a checkbook and and making meals and taking care of things and running errands. You know, he's a licensed driver, and uh, but his projects that he has upcoming are are going to be really really inspiring. I think so. That would be awesome. What is your son's name, Angela? Kelly says, great advice, Tammy, on turning a conversation. Yeah, I just, that's something that just eats me to the core when I'm in those circumstances because it just, it's very uncomfortable for me. And I think that's why it, it settles in my core like that. You know, my we can all relate to that, that gut feeling. And that is something that I, I really, it just, it just instantly makes me feel very uncomfortable because it's just something, uh, you know, it's, it happened for us all in elementary school and then progressed to high school and middle school and all that, you know, and even then, you know, it was something that really ate at me to see how vicious people can be to other people behind their backs. And I just, oh, it was just some Holy Spirit uh, saying that now, you know, settled in me at a very early age to not be a part of that. Not to mention, you know, you can really lose valuable, valuable people in your life by making the mistake of feeling like you need to be part of the status quo and standing there in that conversation. And then either that person walks through and hears your words or someone in that group shares your words. My friends are valuable to me. People are valuable to me. Life is valuable to me, and I just really feel um, so driven to feed life into our communities and to feed life into people. Everybody walks a walk that we don't understand. People are going through things behind the scenes. People are holding things um, internally that they are experiencing, but externally wearing a smile. You know, we never know. Everybody's got a story. And that's why I feel it's so important that we breathe life into this world instead of taking life. Because, you, you know, we all know how a negative word can cut to the core. And I certainly don't want to be a person that is doing that to somebody else. I know firsthand what it feels like to receive it. I surely don't want to do that to anybody. So... It's just, and and I think too that the more we walk this out, the more integrity we build for ourselves, and and I just feel that you will have people pulling towards you because of the goodness you are offering instead of the the negativity you are feeding into everything else there. So that's just something, that's just a pet peeve of mine. That's just always been, and I, I always do, I just think turning things around like that is very important. I missed a lot. I'll have to watch later. Mary, welcome. I'm glad to have you. And um, yes, the replays are always available, and then I, I put these on to YouTube also. So if it's easier to watch on YouTube, sometimes Facebook does weird things. So it's also available on YouTube, so you can watch it there. Yeah, it is uncomfortable, Kelly. And yeah, it's something that I just really steer away from. And and like I said, praying, sometimes in those situations, I will just, I won't get involved. I won't say anything, but uh, internally I will be saying a prayer for something to shift in the conversation or something to change as well. Angela says, my son is a licensed driver, 16 years old, and loves hunting farm animals, the outdoors. He's apprenticing under a taxidermist right now and loving it. His name is Isaiah. Fantastic. And I think that the more, I, you know, this is a wholesome place to me, to have you guys come here, commune, fellowship. I just feel it's so wholesome. And I feel that you guys add so much to it. And that's my prayer for Austin, is to have guys like Isaiah come to his live videos and, and feed into it so that they can form a bond because the mountain boy loves to hunt. He's an outdoorsman. His um, grandfather is a taxidermist. And these kids that are on the spectrum have the ability to do such amazing things. They have detailed minds and uh, the ability to do things with their hands that none of us 
are able to. And I think that's fantastic for Isaiah to be doing taxidermy because that is a talent. And then to get into fish and to fowl, that, um, that is a really extreme level of taxidermy. So to get him into that at such a young age, that is fantastic. Fantastic. My, my, um, Austin's goal is when, um, his grandfather moves out here that he has the opportunity to learn that also. But Austin's delving into so many different things and all hands on. And it's just so exciting. So I would love to have Isaiah join him. We'll look, we'll look for him just because now that I know his name, um, to have him on there with him would be great. Um, Angela, wonderful. He's learning such a great skill. Our daughter has done the same thing as learning life skills that are sadly becoming rare. Yeah. And you know what? These kids, you know, if they have the desire and they have the um, liking for these things, to get involved and to bring these things back is so powerful. And then to teach, to teach. You know, a lot of times these kids have the ability to have such greater patience than we do to be able to teach these skills. So I think that's fantastic. That is so awesome. So guys, how many of you have been using some of the electronic... Um, apps that I suggested and how are they working for you? I believe it was either Jackie or um, Sylvia. I think it was Sylvia that says that she likes to use pen and paper, which is okay. And I'm sure you're progressing well. There is something to writing on pen and paper. I still love doing traditional cards for that reason because there's just something very personal and comforting when you receive a handwritten letter. So I totally, totally get that. Just with my life the way it is and the way we are moving, my electronics are what's saving me. So I was just curious how you guys are making out with that. And um, if any of you need specific prayers on your journey to getting more organized, getting more um, focused, getting better habits in place, whatever that might be. Don't hesitate to ask for that in the comments below or personal message me. And I mentioned about, um, you know, never being afraid to request prayers. You can email me privately at survive at treyerwilderness.com. We get prayer requests every week, which down below in the comments and in the description, there is a list of all of our prayer requests. And it just awes me and amazes me how many people just keep pouring in with their requests. And that's a comforting feeling to know that they feel safe asking us for prayer. They're also asking you for prayer because they see the power behind the comments you guys are making while I'm live. So, you know, there is something very powerful in a community. As I've mentioned before, when two or three gather, God is present, you know, and and. Uh, I can feel his presence all the time when we are doing this. I want to read something to you guys um, in regard to our sweet successes this week. This is today's Bible uh, devotional, by the way. Uh, Kelly just said, I've been using the Bible on our laptop, and I'm traditional and like pen and paper, lol. I'm techno-challenged and stuck in my old comfort zones. That's okay. I bought a fountain pen to write with. I love it, and it makes me my writing time even more special. Oh, I guess, too. That is so cool. I actually have feathers on my um, trunk over here with black ink. I have not used them yet. But they will be traveling with me to my new home, and that is something that I am going to do. Because that that form of traditional writing, so Sylvia, I totally get that. That is way cool. And you know what? We It's okay to be stuck in our old ways. We don't have to convert to the conveniences of today if what you're using works. And I totally get the comfort of the traditional forms of writing the mountain boy has a typewriter in his um, room that we got in the effort to be able to type our books on and to be able to still do books in the future if technology is no longer an option. So having those old, old forms of things and being able to make paper and all those kind of neat skills are important you know that's a form of self-reliance because if things were to fall apart you can still keep going and utilizing um, those skills that you so much enjoy 
I haven't been on much lately. Are you moving? Well, we are, um, Angela, we are in a situation where we are uh, forced to sell our home right now. My medical debt from my um, surgeries and, and uh, healing has pretty much taken us down. So we are selling our homestead and we will be starting over. Uh, Lord willing, um, you know, this is all in God's hands. It's, uh, we are letting him lead the way. We are, you know, our prayer is that someone finds this and loves it as much as we do and takes it over quickly. Uh, we've been going through this for three years, so, um, and we are in a position now where it needs to sell yesterday. So, um, it's a good thing. Um, we like adventures. We like new beginnings. We, um, are just anxious for uh, a new start because it's been pretty grueling what we've been walking the last three years. So, but it is for sale, and you can find information on it at treyerwilderness.com/slash five, the number five, and then acres, all one word. Kelly says, Sylvia, I agree. I love my fountain pen and learning calligraphy. See, there you go, ladies. And then you guys can learn how to make inks from the different plants and the different berries. And also learn how to make the old paper. I love the old papers. Um, the old, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now. But, you know, there's the old papers where they would form flowers into them and, and things. Um, they're just so pretty and so rustic. I think that's why I like it so much. I'm such I'm such a traditional girl and primitive girl. I love all that old, old stuff. So I could see you guys doing that. So I'm going to read this. Um, this is today's January 30th and it is Joshua 1 11, the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Start thanking God for it. This falls into our sweet successes because with our journals and with our focus forward and our new beginnings, we need to always be thankful for our movement, um, our successes, and just thankful for the air we breathe, guys. Every day is a blessing. It's all how you look at it. Every day I wake up, not every day do I feel good, but every day I wake up and today is going to be a great day is what my first thoughts are, regardless how I feel. So... Start thanking God for it. When God tells you he has given you something, it means your name is on the title. When he tells you to possess it, it may mean you have to fight for it. If you don't, you won't receive what he promised. Right now, lots of people may be living in your dream house and working in your dream job. Don't resent them. Rejoice. God can do the same for you. If you're tired of talking about the things you don't possess, get up and go after them. And when you get them, remember that it wasn't because you're so wise and wonderful, but because God gave them to you. The Bible says he gives us all things that pertain unto life. But you must receive the promise inwardly before you can experience it outwardly. For example, your challenge may be believing in your spirit that you're being healed before you see it being, begin to happen physically. Just because something's not immediately evident doesn't mean it won't happen. For example, when we ask God for an oak tree, he gives us an acorn. At this point, we may think God didn't hear and answer our prayer. No, the oak tree is in the acorn. It's just a matter of time before what's inside bursts out. Whatever God has promised you, the seeds are already within you. Water them, nurture them, and don't let anyone uproot them through unbelief. In other words, begin thanking God for what he's going to do in your life. And that is so powerful. It is so, so powerful to thank him before he's even done it and to trust in it because he does promise that he is never going to leave us. He promises us that he will always be good to us. And that he will answer our prayers. Now, not always, like it says, does he answer our prayers the way we exactly expect them to be answered. But he never leaves us. He's always there. He's ever present. And, you know, that's a practice we get in all the time is thanking him for what he's going to do. Because he does do it. And he does do amazing things in our life. No matter what journey we're walking, no matter how grim it is, no matter how up and down it goes, he's there the whole time. And 
We need to remember that and thank him and see the blessings, see the sweet successes and, and be thankful for them. And more than anything, write them down because you will forget them. You're going to have so many sweet successes, you're not going to remember them all. Kelly says, yes, I grow dying herbs for dying wool, but work for ink too. Awesome. There, that is so, so awesome. I have other friends that do that, and it's just so amazing to be able to dye your own wools and make your own yarns and spin your own things. That is just very amazing, and those are skills, like you said, that are rare and are being lost. So to keep those things going is fantastic. So guys, I hope you really, I hope this really touches you today in that we need to be aware of our sweet successes and we need to celebrate them. And there was so much that came out of this today, so many different topics that we talked about and so many different things that we progressed into. And I, I hope that, you know, something stood out very greatly to you and, um, and touched you because we all have the ability to change lives, whether it's through our successes, whether it's through our valleys. But the more we choose to walk upright and to walk the right path, the more we can be a light to others and the more our sweet successes will shine not just for you, but to others too, as will, you know, your, your hard, um, journeys you have to walk through, because as we walk through those journeys, you will stand out like a bright light when you, when we handle them in, in, in a godly way, you know, we, we can't change our circumstances. One of you said it earlier about, um, not being able to, change the circumstances and, and taking comfort in that. It was either Kelly or Tammy, I think, that mentioned that. And, and that is so important that when you can finally let go of those things that you can't control and just live your life. Um, you know, I know that we have a lot of people shaking their heads and thinking that we're crazy in the aspects and the way that we're doing things in our life right now, but God is leading us, God is inspiring us, and we have learned that the most important thing we can ever do in our life is follow God, and that right there will give you a gut feeling too, that if you are chosen or directed to go a certain path, and when you go against that, you have that horrible gut feeling Listen to it, regardless what other people say, no matter how powerful of a place they hold in your life, you've got to follow God first. And that is important, and that is something that we are very strong and very determined to do. So keep that in mind when you're walking your valleys and when you're walking your sweet successes, is to be sure that you're lined up with what God wants of your life, but also that you're being that bright light no matter what it is you're walking. And you know, guys, as much as it comes to thanking God for everything, don't be hard on yourself when you're having one of those rough days because it's part of our walk. It's part of our human nature. And in order to have those sweet successes sometimes, sometimes we need to have that low moment or that low day so that we can come back out of it into our sweet success. So don't be hard on yourself. Just have a new beginning. Be thankful for everything that comes across your path and, and for God's will and work in your life. And, and just enjoy your life. Enjoy the journey. That's the most important part. Sylvia says our time together is always inspirational. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear it. I, I get so inspired by you guys too. And I love that you guys are sharing more and more because that's really, really powerful. Um, it shows how we are walking through this together, that I'm not the only one. I might be the one on the screen, but you guys have powerful words that follow behind and that are part of this journey for us all. Kelly says, because we don't see the end game, eternity is beyond our understanding. Yeah, it is. And you know, honestly, when you get to that point where you can let go of the things you can't control, I truly believe that you start to have a greater peace and understanding and um, comfort in what God's going to do instead of trying to have your hand a hold of it and, and, and trying to have a peace in it. Um, 
that you're actually accepting what he's going to do because when you learn to let go of those things you can't control you're accepting what he's going to do it's very powerful and that's where we are and it's a really awesome awesome place to be and I'm finding more and more as we walk this out that other people don't understand where we're at because they haven't experienced it yet so that is our prayer that you guys get the opportunity to walk something like this out and that you get to those comforting places where you just let go of stuff and and you and you just focus on what's right and what feels right and and what feels good because Ultimately, what God is offering in your life is going to feel good, really, really good. I want to just leave you with Numbers 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show his favor and give you his peace. That is something that I live by, and that is something that I wish... Ooh! Oi! I just went out of the app. Thankfully, I didn't lose you. Um... That is something that I, I wish for all of you. So I'm going to say a prayer here. And uh, thank you for joining me for so long. This was a long one today, but it was so good. So, so good. De Dear Heavenly Father, I just, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this beautiful day, for another day to breathe, another day to be a light for you. You know, there is something so much to be said in being a disciple for you. You know, in the Bible we listen to and the stories of all the disciples and all their hardships and all that they went through to walk it out for you. But what a powerful, powerful example and what a powerful, powerful life. And the more we walk this out here, the more I feel like you're nurturing each of us into our own form of discipleship, which is what we are called to do. We are to be a light to others, and we are to be a blessing to others, and we are called to love. And although some people can be harder than ever to love, you give us the power of prayer to be able to love on them. And the beauty is that same love is given back to us, whether it's prayers from our, our fellow friends or whether it's the love from you, but... There is so much power in that, and Lord, I just ask that you give everybody the strength to continue on this walk this year, and that they learn to find such great peace and comfort in their daily walk with you, and that they find peace and comfort even when they're going through hard times, and they find great peace and comfort and great excitement when they hit their sweet rewards and their sweet successes, and that they learn that those come from you, you know, that as we walk this out and we take the stepping stones to better ourselves and be a better person from one day to the next, that we, we see that all of this has purpose, that those valleys help us to grow and be stronger people and to have more unique qualities because we've traveled through illness and we have empathy, because we have been divorced and we can nurture others that are going through it that we can um there's so many different reasons and all those things that you take each and every one of us through are building blocks to our abilities to help others not just ourselves and those sweet successes that we reach are things that we need to share as well as the valleys we go through because as you go through that valley you will come out the other side and there will be a sweet success and you need to share your testimony with others. And that may be hard for some of you and some of them out there because they aren't outgoing people. But the more we share what we walk out in life, the more people we reach. And honestly, the more sweet successes we will have. And Lord, just help them to realize that every little thing they do in their life has the ability to touch a life. And it's so amazing just to know that there are so many things we may have done in our lives that have changed the direction of somebody else's. And I, I just think that's so important in everything we do. And I just want to ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone that watches this video and just help them in their journey and help them to progress daily and help them to have new beginnings when, when they run into walls and to be sure to celebrate their sweet successes and more than anything to know that those sweet successes are coming from you and to celebrate your goodness. And 
More than anything, as always, I thank you for what you're going to do in each and everyone's life. And just be with all those on our prayer list and all those that are hurting. And just be with Cynthia and her family as they mourn the loss of her brother. And be with um, Jackie's husband and just help them as they progress from his back surgery. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each and every one of our lives, because I know it's going to be absolutely, without a doubt, amazing. And I thank you for being present, and ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. It is a glorious day, regardless what the weather is where you are. It's another day. It's another beginning. It's another opportunity. So... Live it out and make sure you journal it at the end of the day. And I look really, really forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday. So have a fantastic rest of the week.